Hi friends and welcome to Only Green. Forest therapy is something which is a very unfamiliar term to most of us. Today, we have with us a person who urges us to take a break, get away from the stresses of daily urban life and be one with the nature and experience the serenity that the nature has in abundance to offer. Deepika Sinha. Deepika runs Forest Therapy India, a firm which provides the healing and soothing experiences the nature and forests provide. Let's try and understand more about this. Welcome Deepika to Only Green. Thank you, Abby. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak at uh, Only Green. And I'm delighted to share all about forest therapy here. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you were born and brought up in Assam and Darjeeling. How did you get drawn into this love for nature and to seek calmness and serenity of the forest and the different elements of nature? So, um, you know, growing up in the northeastern part of India, you know, it's very different from what we have here in Delhi, Noida, where I'm based. I'm based out of Noida now. And you know how it's in the city, you know, things are fast paced and, uh, you know, everything's happening. People are multitasking and there's a lot happening. So, um, you know, with the childhood of being in nature, being surrounded with nature, uh, I miss that somewhere down the line as life happened. I miss that and I wanted that reconnection. And especially when I had my son, I wanted him to have a deep nature connection. and. Uh, I, you know, I thought, uh, let me look at some forest areas and sanctuaries around Delhi and CR. And I found some and then I started taking him there. I was apprehensive. I thought the child of today is going to get bored. But to my surprise, he was so delighted and he wanted, he wanted to be back. Every weekend he would say, where are we going next? So uh, one thing led to the other. And I thought there has to be a way where we can get people to reconnect with this beautiful uh, uh, nature and, you know, how it has a plethora of uh, benefits. You know, you are away from, you connect with yourself. You know, you're in the surrounding of natural things around you. And so I did a little research and then I realized that there's already a, uh, uh, something called Shinrin Yoku or forest therapy and it's happening in Japan and you know I understood that uh, this was something that can be you know brought back Indians also we had our Gurukul culture if you remember if you read our books you know we always were in uh, connected with nature in some way or the other so that led me you know my son he led me to do it and I wanted to lead more people into the same uh, way you know even if it's not every day, you know, on the weekends, let's all go out to nature and let's reap the benefits of being in nature, you know, the therapeutic benefits. So that's how it happened. Okay, great. Uh, now you talked about Shindrin Yoku mm -hmm. or the forest bathing or forest therapy. Yes. Uh, how is this program done and how is it beneficial in terms of uh, uh, rejuvenating yourself? Also, can somebody do it without any guidance uh, going on, on our own and doing it? Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, if you go back to the history of uh, Shin Yoku, also called forest bathing, uh, so it was basically uh, uh, in, the, in Japan, you know, it was, uh, it started off by the Ministry of Agriculture and they wanted people to, it was a time of tech boom, you know, people were, you know, how people were all busy working and they were uh, stressed, you know, the workers were getting stressed out. They wanted to find a way, you know, where people could be led down to nature somehow. And Japan has some beautiful forest in that area. And uh, so what happened, it was initially started as a purpose for a uh, to offer an eco uh, an antidote, antidote to stress, you know, but later they realized a lot of research happened and there was a lot of physiological benefits also to it. They did a lot of tests and research happened and they realized that it, it brought down stress. You know, the people who went back to work, their focus was better. You know, the productivity was better. So one thing led to the other. And uh, that's how in the 1980s, this term of Shinrin Yoku, which means forest bathing was coined and uh, you know then the westerners took it and they uh, started forest therapy forest bathing and various trainings happened people started venturing off into the forest and uh, so i think that's what uh, you know it was perhaps a way to get people into nature 
and a way of a leisure activity which actually turned into something more therapeutic and with scientific evidence it was something which was helping us physiologically as well now i mean uh, when you take people for uh, the forest uh, therapy how are the sessions planned how long are the sessions and what are the do's and don'ts that you uh, insist on uh, people insist uh, when they come out for this so uh, see uh, abi in the uh, yeah also about the question that you said you know can anyone do it to that yes all of us have done forest bathing in our own way sometime you know if you have if you're a nature lover if you have been in the forest and if you if you like to you know in the hills in the beach and you feel relaxed you have already done forest bathing in some form or the other all of us can do it and uh, so for why a guide guided walk you know why that's in essential so yes all of us can do our own walks in nature and enjoy it but when uh, when i guide a walk you know what the essential thing is a guide first sees the trail we assess the trail we understand you know okay there are washrooms in this area if somebody needs to go there uh, there is a safety here you know this area we shouldn't go maybe there are some wild animals there so a lot of things you know we need to be and a guide is also trained with uh, uh, wildlife first aid also in case something happens in the forest so you know when you are there by yourself in in a forest area you know if something happens or uh, if a mishap happens you're there by yourself you know but as with a guide you know you have a professional who's leading you so you are carefree you are immersed more deeply because you know there is someone to guide you plus a guide will make the connection deeper uh, because we give out small invitations you know because when you're on by yourself you're perhaps in a mindset of i have to reach from point a to point b from this point to that point i want to walk so that mindset like a morning walk morning walk i want to take two rounds i want to jog from this this place to that spot so uh, it is not an immersive experience it's a lovely experience nevertheless but in a forest bathing walk it could be a very short space of area where you are covering but it is a very immersive you awaken your five senses and you you know completely immerse yourself you know so that's the uh, uh, so for a guide for a to join a walk a forest bathing walk by uh, with a guide it is more meaningful i would like to say because you know you know, you have the comfort of knowing that the trail has been assessed i am in a safe environment plus that sociological you know we are we are in a group we have sharing circles it's more fun you know also we share what we are noticing you know or what we feel what memories it brings back so you have your time slot so a typical walk would be for say 2 uh, hours that's a typical walk is a duration of 2 hours could be longer slightly if if it depends on the forest area or on the garden that you are taking the walk in and uh, we have small small invitation and activities which just helps in making that connection for the practitioner more deep more meaningful and uh, it is it is more blissful i must say yeah okay uh see uh, what are the do's and don'ts i mean what what oh the do's and don'ts yeah yes sir yes, so, most importantly do's is you know come there with a, a clear mind of just committing yourself or with a setting an intention to come commit yourself to that environment let nature allow nature to be your therapist uh and then set an intention maybe there are some goals in your mind maybe there is something some answers that you are seeking you know put it out there come with that and then just let it be let nature you know do its uh, therapy for you and uh, be a part of it and be, don't be skeptical don't think what will people think or what is happening no just enjoy that moment and believe me no matter who whoever comes for the walk you know they come and then they just be you just become you go back to what you were don't sir we leave our gadgets behind this is a time for yourself in nature we leave all our phones we leave uh, uh, any cameras everything because we just want to be us and in nature so that is the whole idea so that's a big don't uh, you can carry your mobile because you know how today people are the mobile is their part of them <laughs> but uh, we tell them keep it in silent 2 hours you can allow that for yourself to actually you know have the complete experience and uh, that's a big don't otherwise uh, follow what the guide has to say you know if there are there are uh, activities which 
or if i say you know in the forest there are certain fungus or some mushrooms you know do not touch so you know whatever the guide is experienced so he will always we always will uh, tell you things what are safe for you and you can go along and just those guidelines basically which are minimal but yes if you follow those small small things you know it will be a very uh, lovely session of forest therapy okay uh, initially when we started you said that uh, this helps you to reduce your stress rejuvenate yourself but then there are also a lot of physiological benefits that uh, i have seen being mentioned uh, in places i mean what are those physiological benefits so uh, first of all you know people who have uh, uh, anxiety issues also anxiety issues or people who have uh, inflammations in their body uh, chronic pains in their body so it's amazing also how uh, being in this natural environment also helps that and even in the forest there are certain uh, aerosols which are which these trees emit you know when a tree is attacked by uh, animals or by uh, insects or pests you know they they kind of release a chemical into the forest and when we breathe that you know it's called phytoncides when we breathe that that also really helps our body it's very good it actually we call it um, it's called nk cells which actually fights even diseases like cancer cancerous diseases also it's a, a form of a preventive medicine and uh, then there is uh, inflammations when you have a chronic pain or inflammation there's a activity we do which is grounding ourselves which is like a, a barefoot walk in forest uh, there any connection with nature could be a uh, dipping your legs in the stream sitting on a rock a direct contact with anything in nature you know uh, because the earth is like a giant battery it has this free ions in it you know and we need to get that and if we stay away from that the more we are not in touch we're disconnected from nature we are missing out on that natural because initially when uh, earlier we were very very connected we were maybe we were ancestors were farmers or we were walking barefoot or we were tilling soil we were in connect with nature you know in the form of any form now we are wearing shoes with synthetic soles we are wearing gloves when we are gardening so we are very far disconnected so we need to have that touch with the earth to get these ions to charge ourselves up so this charge it really shows that uh, people who have chronic pain insomnia all this also gets uh, benefit from that okay that's good and that's good to know i mean these are something which we as layman never knew about uh, mm -hmm. see i mean uh, you have done certain uh, training certifications for before becoming a forest uh, therapy guide Yes. Uh, they, I mean, for the for somebody young who an aspirant who wants to become a uh, therapy guide, yes. what are these courses and how can somebody get access to all these courses? Today? Yeah. So, uh, if you check now, uh, many places around the world are offering forest bathing guide trainings. If you just even Google forest bathing guide training, you will find very credited uh, uh, organizations who are doing these. Uh, i trained with uh, nadur uh, therapy in uh, forest therapy in um, uh, ireland then there's forest uh, therapy hub there is uh, the american association of forest bathing guides so there are many out there you know and during the pandemic we, they also were offering online courses which was great you know you could stay at home and actually take the training and then you know practice it practically like literally in a in a natural environment so uh, so definitely if you are a nature lover if you are a social worker or if you're working with patients who are having mental health if you're a mental health practitioner um if you are a eco tourist guide you know you can there's so many places where this can be incorporated you know and if every wellness practitioner you can add it to your wellness practice just like there is yoga and there is tai chi and there are various practices you can you know include that so it's nice to have an additional a uh, therapeutic practice to your practice which so an aspirant of people who are uh, uh, psychotherapist or you know who are working even with social workers with people who are having problems it will just enhance their work so yes if you uh, have a uh, if it's if you have the calling that nature is something that is close to you and you want to impart something or you know you it is for you it is definitely for you as a message to youngsters can this be yes. taken up as a profession on a regular basis i mean people coming into this uh, as a profession 
Well, um, definitely uh, for youngsters, you can uh, uh, take it up as a professional. Uh, like I said in the earlier uh, question, if you can perhaps incorporate this as a part of a wellness practice, you know, uh, youngsters today are, have, are more mature than what I feel I was when I was a younger child. You know, they have so many options available and they, are, they, ha they know the benefits of these things. They understand, they understand no matter how uh, technologically savvy they are, but they are also very smart in understanding uh, the therapeutic benefits of something which has evidence-based, you know, which has proof that it is good. So again, you know, for youngsters who are into, uh, you know, who, who want to get into uh, understanding the therapeutic benefits of nature therapy, yes, you can be, you can, you know, you can take it up as a uh, as a career, you know, you can be leading people in your area. You can be doing retreats where you take people out into for uh, immersive, immersive seven day retreats. You can organize that. And uh, so definitely, yes, I think it is great, you know, uh, to take it up as a profession as well. Okay. Now you're based in uh, Delhi. I mean, you, you, you handle your sessions in and around Delhi in the uh, forest around Delhi. Yes. But then, I mean, uh, what, uh, what what are in your your opinion? What are the ideal locations for a forest therapy trip? See, for uh, ideal location could be any place, absolutely any place which has a lovely canopy of trees, has some green earth to walk in. Not the uh, not the fake grass, you know, in the cities. The real. If you have a garden, and all we are blessed that in India we have all our cities do have lovely gardens and ancient places you know historical gardens where you'll find ancient trees and so uh, it can be done absolutely anywhere if, even if for those people who do not have access to a forest perhaps even it is nature therapy so even you know just noticing the plants in your balcony or even looking at the sky noticing the moon changing uh, you know everything around just noticing the birds which have come in the season every area has nature elements around them the ideal forest of course in you know, the ideal forest would be an untouched forest you know the city forest would perhaps have uh, some chemicals pesticides you know you know how like the city parks i would say and then there are many people visiting it so it might not be the most ideal place but uh, the real forest in india you know when you go for me i've traveled to uttarakhand i do my retreats there so the himalayas have these lovely trails you know which many of them are, have very few people who have been there and it's very serene you know sometimes i get pin drop silence and just maybe a call of a bird, a Himalayan bird sometimes, and it's just you and the five elements, you know, the wind, the sunshine, the clear blue sky. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's just for you to find where you can find that nature connection. Uh, ideally, ideally, of course, it would be a place where it's away from the crowd. Uh, if not, but in the city, you know, you have to make use of what is available. So, find a nice park next to you, you know, find an area where you can just, you know, spend, say, 20 minutes a day just to sit and just take in the nature. Yeah. Okay. Uh, details regarding uh, Deepika and the work for us, uh, Therapy India will be given in the description, her Instagram handle and the uh, website will be given in the description. Now, coming to the final question, I mean, uh, what will be your uh, message to anyone who is stressed out and would really want to enjoy the benefits of healing power of nature. What, I mean, how can somebody really come out of that? I think uh, forest bathing for me, you know, it connects you to the loveliness of life. Uh, I have started seeing things in a different perspective. And uh, uh, of course, for people who are overstressed and uh, people who have depression, uh, just try it out for once. I know when you're depressed and you're going through a bad state or you're having anxiety, it's difficult to actually think that, oh, there are many people saying many things, you know, this is just another activity, but try it out once, you know, just come. Or even if you don't want to come to a guided walk, you know, just spend 20 minutes in a natural surrounding and just engaging your five senses. Very simple, you know, uh, maybe just notice what you can smell, or uh, just touch a tree and see how the barks feel or notice the flowers, notice very deeply the different patterns, you know, maybe, uh, you know, so the, just, just the five senses and feel a leaf, you know, smell it, 
so these are small activities one can do for office people you know you are busy balancing work life uh, uh, and life at home you know take that time because we ourselves we should prioritize ourselves sometimes you know you can just step out during your lunch break or during a tea break and you know and just connect with a nature element you know maybe there's a tree there's a plant you know just engage your five senses you know it'll help you be more centered balance you know because at work we get a lot of uh, things happening because we are constantly working on the computer we are not engaging all the five senses if you just step out and just engage your five senses maybe take your tea tea out and have a sip taste the tea look around at the greenery look at the sky look at a plant you know take in the aromas what do you smell what do you notice you know and when you come back you will see you'll feel more centered more balanced and you'll see a, a clarity of things you know things will be more clear and the focus that will be a lovely break to take in between okay uh thanks a lot deepika i think uh, we had a wonderful 15 20 minutes of uh discussion i mean this is something which i never really knew about i mean i started searching for this and that's when i found out that there is something like uh, forest therapy is there it's happening even i didn't know about yeah. it Thanks a lot for your time yeah. uh, that 15 minutes I think it will be really useful for our viewers too thank you Thank you Ibrahim thank you so much everyone